The Viger. Yeah, it certainly looks to be that way. Taking that one off the book. King actually not banning here. They might be penalized. We'll see if they actually do throw anything through. Nah gets taken away from Koro. He's been so strong. Yeah, I mean, probably the best performing Nah player in the LPL. And this is in a region for some pretty carry heavy top laners. So to, for that to be true of Koro is very impressive for him as a player. But uh, we are continuing now. And I love what you talk about King, especially in draft. They do look much better when they're ahead. And a lot of getting ahead early comes from good drafting. Yeah, it certainly does. And that, that's the point about King. The fact that they're very good at picking... Uh, they're they rely very heavily on picking comfort picks, and that's sometimes counterintuitive to how they want to play the early game. The double Trinity Force just didn't work because they never got to that spike early enough. Nah took over with all of his CC, so I like the fact that Kalista maybe was a better pickup in the bottom lane, allowed uh, Wuxian to get on more of a hyper carry, and he had a fantastic couple of late game team fights. Yeah, it's funny actually, Wush in the early games of the LP was actually playing very well, mostly on Siva, one of the better performing Siva players, but Siva sort of rotated out, actually a fairly poor landing matchup against Kalista, especially early on, so unsurprisingly, Siva kind of got figured out, and Wush has looked a little lost since then. Yeah, it certainly has, and Siva, as you mentioned, the Kalista's a big one to point out, Jinx was the other one that really came back in and just absolutely steamrolled, so... Um, um, ever since then, has gone back to more hyper carry play, which doesn't allow the team to, I guess, build those gold leads that we spoke about. I think Callista definitely is the best uh, bearing uh, early game hyper carry because that range just provides so much utility in lane, especially level one when you're jumping all over the place. That passive nearly a second ability at that point in the game. So we'll be interested to see how he goes against Deft, who is typically a very passive laner, likes to sit back, but his damage per second in team fights is just so high. Yeah, he's been a bit more aggressive, especially when Clear Love has visited him, and he's done it a lot there on the bottom side of the map, but the bands are almost through now. Looks like he just popped back in the champs like Nalu and Cassidy, the three there for King, and Vega, Aurelia, and Ari EDG's three bands. Yeah, so taking the Ari off the board, respecting it on this patch, Viga being taken away as well, that's just such a good support pickup, and Sky being hit with probably the only target ban this time around. Getting rid of the Aurelia, that's a lot of respect. Koro has been playing well, but doesn't want to go up against that one. Yeah, we talked about King's comfort here. Sky's looked most comfortable on his Aurelia. Was actually undefeated in LSPL games, in competitive games before moving into the LPL. So again, King, still a team that's finding their feet here in the... Uh in the professional scene in China, and EDG on top of the leaderboards right now, but King are going to first pick themselves a Rumble. Yeah, so taking that one off the board with the Cassidy gone, not really many counter picks, at least hard counters. Aurelia is the other one, and that's gone as well. Clear Love instantly locking in that Rek'Sai. That's been one of my favorite champions to watch him perform on. Yeah, I mean, it's been a go-to jungler for a lot of these junglers in the LPL. We do see Lissandra, the second pick there as well for EDG, so some strong stuff done already, but Clear Love, he was one of the first players along with Beast from Snake to really bring out Nunu. Big control jungle style coming out from them as well. Clear Love has always been known as a bit more of a passive jungler, and Rek'Sai really fits the versatility and just the global control that he wants to get out of it. Yeah, exactly right. It allows him to use that trans Tremor Sense for a little bit of vision and utility, and then that ultimate to get around the map much quicker than you would expect out of a jungler. So I do like when Clear Love plays it. He goes to the bottom lane a lot more than expected when he does play Rek'Sai in particular. So look for Wuxian to be camped out in this game. And the Xerath and Callista being picked up here. Blind pick Xerath, maybe respecting Pawn's Azir play, who is still very strong in this patch, but that's very brave at how good Pawn is in an Assassin's. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see what Pawn picks up here. LeBlanc, I guess, notably open here, but Ari banned out, so a reasonably safe blind pick here on 5.2. But King already picking up their three cores, basically. Rumble and Xerath for the top, and Callista down for the bottom. Those are the carries already done for King, so EDG have a lot of information, and they'll keep it safe still. Ezreal actually coming in as a flex pick, and Janna there as well for Mako. Yeah, and an aggressive draft out of King, picking up your three carries first, and letting your jungle fall this late in the draft, especially when they're Things like Lee Sin, things like Jarvan that just fit majority of compositions and don't give much away. Shows that they have a specific game plan against the EG EDG lineup. Looks to be very team fight heavy and revolve around only one AD threat in Wuxian, so he can get going in this late game. Yeah, and he's definitely shown he can get going in certain games, but we'll have to see what EDG want to do. They actually have a pretty squishy team right now, and this clear level on the rec side gets very tanky, so Kalista going to have a field day against this comp, and King are going to make it pretty interesting actually rounding out the team with a jungle nidalee and support leona as their last two yeah and once again this is a team that pokes very well kites backward extremely well the only real hard engages leona and i guess 
She also can throw out defensive solar flares if needed. So I like the lineup out of King here. Very good at sieging down turrets. Very hard to get on top of. And unless Koro performs particularly well, and that TF comes through, that TF will be interesting. Uh, they There are responses here out of EDG, but not much hard engage. TFs come through, that's a lot of hard engage out of the uh, mid lane player. Yeah, I actually like the EDG had so much flexibility kind of moving through their drop, but like you mentioned, Twist of Fate is going to be the pick here finally coming through for EDG. Uh, so we are going to move uh, as we we'll actually into the AD carry position. Lissandra in her home in the top side, but Point is going to play TF here. Very interesting against this lineup. Yeah, it certainly is. I think that they picked it because they realized that there is so much kite and the ability to move backwards in these team fights that if Koro doesn't get a priority target, then they're going to, I guess, lack the follow-up CC they need. So now, Twisted Fate, as soon as he picks up that Zonya's Hourglass, he becomes a primary engager, and Lissandra follows him in into the priority target. They also have some good wave clear to deal with the uh, Siege comp coming out. That's always important. Yeah, I mean, I love it in the team fighting, but even moving through, it's interesting that Twisted Fate feels like he can pressure a lot of these lanes as well. Yeah, and two global ultimates, two of the last left in the game, longest range at least. Shen, the other one you have to throw out there, but being able to get in and help out Clear Love, maybe, I guess, be able to pressure this Nidalee from different areas as well is just going to be very important as we move through the mid game, especially if MLXG commits to that tier build that we've seen so often that kind of hampers the early game. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of Nidalees. We saw Spirit yesterday playing it amazingly. Just so much pressure that you can apply with that champion. Yeah, certainly. If you hit that Spear, you have some of the best early game ganks because of that gap closer and raw damage. But it is also very risky because no hard CC. Yeah, and the issue there is that if Nidalee gets in your jungle and starts harassing you, though, it just falls apart so quickly. She's got such good control, so you have to keep her out. And that's why I do like the globals, like you mentioned there. Yeah, and the clear speed is very quickly. Can catch her out as she tries to go and get that counter jungling done. Well, we'll see what happens here. Let's get on to the rift. Welcome on to the Rift, ladies and gentlemen. It's King versus EDG on our last day here of week six for the LPL. King are on the blue side here for game one. EDG over on the red. And EDG, can they collect even more points? They have a massive lead so far at the top of the standings. And all they'd want to do here is extend it. Yeah, exactly right. They're looking for another 2-0 and they've done it so many times so far. Deft and Wushin in this bottom lane, the Callista versus the Ezreal matchup, the pushing power that comes out of Hurricane Callista might be able to give Ezreal some challenges in the early game, also some high damage threat with that Ren, so looks like Pawn coming down here, maybe trying to bait some aggression out of the Callista. Yeah, Pawn actually has an early boots here as well, so getting aggressive. Wushin actually has to be very careful, gets stunned up there. Great ultimate, uh, great tornado, sorry, there by Mako. And first blood easily goes to Pawn. Yeah, and that was just... Callista recognizing that very good level one wants to jump around and get all of that harass down, but just drawing people into the bottom lane. And what a great response out of EDG. I mean, I don't know if Pawn did the boots thing on purpose, but he's going to go back with a Doran's ring and a pair of boots. So ingenious first buy there from Twisted Fate. Yeah, it certainly was. Gives him a lot of sustain in a lane that's going to evolve some poking as well. So he's in a fantastic position. We saw how fast he ran down there. You'd have to think there's some utility points in there to just increase that movement speed as well and getting pawn ahead always going to be a good thing yeah i mean we talk about star players on eg how it's it's really hard to pinpoint someone that's really putting the team on their back but pawn has probably consistently performed above and beyond here for this team yeah he certainly had his uh after a fantastic world, making a very good case to be considered one of the best mid laners in the world. You say one of because of the likes of Faker, and of course, Cool can never be overlooked as well over on OMG, but Porn really has been performing extremely well. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good mid lane talent around the world. A lot of it's anchored here in the LPL, and Porn, one of the best players here in the LPL. So a strong pedigree already, but we are going to break back out into standard lanes. Uh, Hoosh will return with a death in his column, but he'll just be fine here with Leona Callista versus Ezreal Jana. Yeah. Yeah, and Death didn't go back and buy, so no extra sustain, meaning if they hit level 2 here, they still have a very high kill threat against a passive lane, so already, ooh. MLXG in a bit of trouble, actually does hunt the minion very well calculated, just going to get a pounces back in, needs a Q, pounces back on top, and that was close, but just gets level 3. Yeah, that was ridiculously close. Nidalee actually farms the jungle really well, so getting that low might have been a little bit of a misplay, but... 
able to survive in the end, and he'll be able to heal himself back up. I almost wonder how aggressive MLXG is. Runes of Master Giant. In fact, he's keep going here. He's got the smite. He's got a bit of extra health on the red buff, and there's the Nidalee clear we know and love. Yeah, exactly right. Nidalee's abilities just allow her to farm through that jungle so heavily, and with the heal coming through at level 3, it does allow for a much quicker uh, route. Must have gone the Q and the W first up. Yes, we pull back down to the bottom lane there as well. The pawn's actually rotating in, so going to try and affect another lane at level 3, but we'll just back off there instead. We've seen a lot of players here uh, start to pick up Kalista in the LPL, but unlike Siva, who was seeing a lot of play in the early weeks, I feel like we haven't quite figured out the best way to beat her in lane yet. Yeah, Kalista's really strange because she takes a matchup even long range and uses that passive to get in your face, and it's so hard to avoid her. I think that Corky maybe is the best matchup, is an extreme bully, so you can say that about a lot of things, but shoves back very well against Kalista as well, uses those rockets to great effect. And the Sheen versus the uh, Hurricane is what really does it for me because Hurricane adds so little in the regard of burst damage, no raw AD stats there, really is consistent and allows Corky to just use the burst potential from his kit and that item to take control. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on Death's build there as well. We'll see if he does want to go for an early Sheen at any point, either for the blue bit or just even the Trinity Force we've seen from the likes of Kid from IG in the LPL as well. But as things are, Dev is always handling his lane very calmly. Yeah, he certainly, and he went a little bit aggressive there walking forward, maybe because they'd spotted out the fact that Nidalee was on the other side of the map. Clear love, able to get eyes on the jungler. That's always extremely important when you're going against a Leona lane because 3v2s are so, so dangerous. Ooh, actually, a little Raptor stolen away there. Clear love will defend his camp there, MLXG, trying to apply some pressure, but we talk about it. Rek'Sai going to really try and control this Nidalee moving around his jungle. Yeah, and anyone watching to play mid lane here, walk, look how often Pawn leaves his lane. Not to go anywhere, to just put implied pressure around the map, and he's so quick here. Even with Nidalee chasing him, probably not going to be able to catch up. Yeah, those early boots again paying dividends. Spear going to come through just missing there. The hitbox not quite large enough extending there. And I also love that Pawn's walking off his mini wave because Assassin has to make the choice. Do I poke him or do I farm? Yeah, exactly right. And he's that confident in his ability and that additional movement speed he has that he's playing very far up, even in early levels where he needs a couple of wild cards to clear out. But this is the first game coming through from Nidalee in the bottom lane. Yeah, actually Deft just dodging the spear there as well. So we'll know what's up with the jungle at MLX probably going to have to give that up here and a bit of pressure but EDD's bottom line just kind of walk out yeah and Pawn because of the amount of uh, times he's walked side to side actually just found the pink lane in a uh, pink ward in mid lane as well so that one will fall quickly with Assassin going back to base so overall a very even early game maybe in Koro's favor in the top lane but everywhere else very even across the board and not much pressure so far. I mean, Klilov might try and make it work here as well. Is he going to line up a gank here on Sky? We've seen Klilov, he doesn't gank that often, but he's very effective when he does. So we'll see when he does want to pull the trigger here. Koro already looking good. Twist of Fate going to come up here as well. Pawn's going to move and gets the start. Knock up to follow. Koro there with the snare, and Sky's going to get first blood on by Klilov. Yeah, and that ultimate was that good out of Twist of Fate. In the bottom lane, there was a little bit of a scuffle, and Wuxian thought it was coming for him, and blew his flash to just get away because of how far they'd overcommitted. So... Across the board now, EDG starting to use this Twisted Fate to get advantages. He'll make it though. He's going to get locked up. A good double tornado, but Death moving in. MLXG, right time, right place. And now Koro is actually teleported in, but it's 4v2 right now. As EDG could be in some more trouble. Koro is forced to ult himself. Death gets speared in the face for it though. And Koro going to move in. Sky going to try and look for the die, but EDG just escaped. No, Assassin gets the first part. Can't find Koro though, but does get Death. Yeah, so that is a two for nothing trade. Equalizing kills and gold fantastic reactive teleport out of sky and that was a level five versus level six not even equalizer available mako just going over aggressive in that skirmish yeah we talk about the needle spears from the jungle those are the sorts of things that can apply so much early damage and pressure and mlxg is gonna go for the early tier yeah so able to pick that one up not as early as we have seen of course we've seen that maybe even before jungle items in a couple of games but being able to stack that one up is definitely a good thing the fact that he has that extra assist means that it's not an extremely greedy buy. He is fairly ahead in terms of jungle passage at the moment with 100% kill participation. So he's just looking to, I guess, start his late game very early. Yeah, we'll see now as Pawn will grab up the blue buff as well, return to his lane. Actually, even in CS, despite all the movement and the roaming, and actually up a couple hundred gold, probably due to his loaded dice passive. So Pawn playing very well, and you talked about the pressure that he's applying, even the implied pressure in the bottom, forcing the colors to flash. Yeah, and it's just so important as a twist of fate. You can see he's picked up boots too extremely early as well to be able to get around the map 
and use the fact that you have that very early CC and high mobility to help your team out. His passive used to do it inherently when it gave everyone gold. Now, of course, only affecting Twisted Fate, so that's why he's so far ahead. But, yeah, I like the way Pawn's played this lane so far. Definitely looking to get his team ahead, not being selfish. Yeah, so off to a solid start there in the mid. Checking in the top corner, about 20 CS ahead, so not too bad there. And Death a little bit behind now, actually, in the bottom lane, but has gone back for his first shot. Kalista there on King's side. Woosh has gotten uh, parts of the Hurricane, so Rico Bo plus a dagger with a spare longsword for uh, presumably the early Vamp Scepter, and a tear's already done for Death, so he is at least going into Mana Mune. Yeah, he's going into Mana Mune, but this is a reason I don't really like the Ezreal Kalista matchup, because it doesn't punish Kalista's weak point of the game, which is the fact that she doesn't get AD on her first shot, because Ezreal mirrors that. And even as far as def uh, offensive stats go, ooh... It's cool. Deft is going to... I can shift out. He's in the play. Very good attempt, but Mako just disengages with the Nato. Yeah, I think that's a little bit of a misplay from Mako because he had his ultimate available. So after the Arcane Shift came out, could have just thrown that Solar Flare out. No Flash available from Mako. So would have maybe been able to get on top of him. Instead... Ultimate use for absolutely nothing. Yeah, Liam didn't want to use the cooldown there, it seems like. So, going to have to just use the ulti and walk away slowly. There is back in the top. Koro versus Skylar. Sandra getting quite far ahead in this early lane. Yeah, certainly is. Koro is an absolute beast. He's, in, in my personal opinion, probably the premier top lane in the world at the moment, along with maybe Smeb from the uh, LCK, but he just plays every single lane in such a controlled fashion and never goes over-aggressive, as we see the fanciest footsteps coming out of Pawn. Yeah, Pawn's dancing really strong there. And, uh, I mean, the early move speed that we thought we had in the boots here is actually going to get altered. Just dodges all three of them, walking in a perfect little triangle. Dodges the stun as well. All right, can't dodge that one. Finally gets hit by a long-range Q, but that was a lot of mana used for absolutely no reward. And... Yeah, he's just putting on a clinic here in the mid lane, able to keep up in CS against a very good laner in Zareth, and absolutely no pressure. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of skill shots in this game, so good thing that Pawn seemed to have calibrated his boots there properly to dodge them, but King instead is just going to move into the Dragon after a bit of pressure, but the rest of King's bottom lane move it. Twisted Fate is here with his ult, he does pop it, knows they're on the Dragon, ult he comes in, they're going to try and steal, but MLXG secures it with a smite. Yeah, and uses a TF ultimate, so the first one was success successful, second one only used to scout, not much going to come from that, so that is a win for King. Able to pick up the first dragon of the game, and they did it just because of how powerful Nidalee's early jungle is. Yeah, we've seen this a lot yesterday, especially with Spirit's uh, Nidalee game. Yesterday for World Elite, just so much early game pressure you can apply to get neutral direction. Clearly, in the top, can a smite onto the sky. We'll find the knock up there as well, and there's an. Very easy solo kill almost there for Rexo. Yeah, but Koro had done so much of the work already. That's a huge minion wave crashing into that turret. So Sky having an absolute shocker at the moment. Zero, two, and one down. 100% CS nearly. It's 90 to 53 up in that lane. And Lissandra, we've seen it take over games before in a very good position to do so. Looking for a teleport behind the bottom lane one more time. You've got to quit Merlin Nomicon as well, but MLXG going to try and huck some spears there. Mako just dodges the first one. And he did, you'll feel some pressure, but just back off and start last hitting under their turret. And we can see Koro looking so strong early on. Is this a matchup that Lissandra is expected to do this well in? Yeah, it's certainly a matchup that Lissandra is expected to win, but it is not It is salvageable by Rumble because of how short range Lissandra is, you can actually put on a surprising amount of pressure at the early points of the game by making her spam spells to keep up with your damage output. Just because Rumble is, of course, resourceless, able to get in that danger zone, overheat, and get a lot of work done, but just doesn't look like Sky's been able to do that. Very good control of the lane by Koro. Actually, ulti, they're going to come in. Does not cancel the recall. Woosh just uses it uh, shortly after getting hit by the ulti, but Pawn continuing to pressure now. 15 CS ahead, done with the Athenes and the Sork Shoes, and is walking back up towards top lane. Yeah, it certainly looks like he wants to get some more work done up there, but Lamb, he's on his tail, hot in pursuit. Looking to make use of this Leona Roam. Clear out some vision on the top side of the map. Yeah, it does find the Pinkle. We'll clear it out of the little brush there next to the Scudder Crab. Clear love. Find a fine land, but can't quite do it yet. And Assassin also with a blue. And an Athene's done for Zerith. Yeah, and this is a really cool tactic coming out of EDG right now. Recognizing that maybe Callista is stronger. So don't allow MLXG to camp that side of the map. Get as many pink wards on the top side of the map as possible. Pressure turrets even taking one down there. And just allow... 
Deft to farm unharassed. They've been forced to draw Mako away from that lane, and it's given Deft a, Deft a lot of time to catch back up. Yeah, I mean, he's a bit behind in CS, but Jana Ezreal with a few levels in Jana and a Sheen now for Ezreal. Things are going to get a bit easier now that Kalista's just got a hurricane. Yeah, it certainly is. And Kalista, still a very big kill threat in this lane with the Leona. Just so much follow-up CC comes out. And, ooh. Deft trying to push out this lane. He wants to go back and shock. Pawn actually got chunked out there off screen by Assassin's ulti, so he's going to not be able to affect the rest of them. After that, Mimi Koro is going to back off here and Liam posturing aggressively, trying to find an ulti, just going to force the blink back. And again, King's bottom lane maintain control down here. Yeah, so they've definitely got control. However, they're losing other parts of the map harder than they're winning the bottom, uh, bottom lane. They're up 20 CS, which is a very good result. But in the top lane, that's 50 CS and a turret, let alone in the mid lane where Pawn has been able to influence all of the map to much better effect than Assassin. Yeah, and Pawn, despite uh, all the movement, still up in CS, about almost 1,000 gold ahead of Assassin Zerathir. And I love this adaptation for his build as well. He knows what he wants to be doing. He's got a very fast distortion upgrade. Yeah, wants to make sure that he can get in there with that Ghost more importantly than even the Flash. It just adds so much movement speed onto the Ghost that enchant. So really wants to be able to impact as much as possible. And with that, Athens has all the cooldown reduction he needs in his kit as well. Yeah, Defter is going to get poked out a little bit in the bottom side here, but Wush is continuing to hop around, keep control of the lane here. It's a bit hard to not auto-push the lane with the Hurricane Callista, but you do want to apply as much pressure as you can. Yeah, you certainly do, and they need to maybe try and start pressuring this turret as well, but they you just see the hesitation with how well... Uh, in the top lane again. Yeah, Pawn going back in the top there. Korra already ulties up Sky, the stun will follow, and Clear Love is here once again, and Korra going to get the kill this time. Yeah, completely picking on Sky. That's three deaths now at 14 minutes, Mark, so... He's getting bullied at this point, but good reaction coming out of King here, taking down the mid lane turret. And we, and we used to joke about Clear Love, you know, camping the lanes here for Deft and setting up a little resort in the bottom side. Not needing to do this game, Delft, Deft very self-sufficient on the Ezreal, but I have to say, Clear Love, the gank engineer, he is very good at camping a lane. Yeah, he certainly is. He picks a lane and solos them out, and really, in this game, Koro has been the beneficiary of that, but he built the lead himself, and then Koro just came in to secure it. Bringing in both globals, we spoke about how important that is to be able to use them to great effect. And recognizing that they don't need to win bottom lane, happy to just equalize. Although the turret now will be taken uh, eventually, which is a very good sign for King. And they've just put a lot of pressure over the top side of the map to really keep this rumble down. They're going to even up the gold here if the turret falls. Out. A big shield from Mako might keep it alive. And now Korra's actually down here. He's walked down from the base here with, I believe, yes, an early home guard's done as well there for those cooldown boots. So looking to get into the next dragon here in about 45 seconds time. But I like that you mentioned the comps here with the globals. This, to me, gives me some chills back to the clear world elite days where we used to play with Messiah, of course, the big TF, with Nocturne back then. Yeah, he certainly did. They used to be able to zip all over the map. And the added movement speed that came out of Nocturne really suited him well. Rek'Sai, very similar champion to how old Nocturne used to be played, so I definitely appreciate the reference there coming through of how this team used to be put together, and at the moment, Sky is just that much further behind uh, Koro that even if they choose to fight here, they're going to be against an absolutely massive Lissandra, so Sky opting to keep the lane as even as possible, draw Koro into this wave, and Try and get him to push up, maybe make himself susceptible to some more ganks. Yeah, we'll have to see here. This guy actually about 1,400 gold behind Korra, so it's really starting to stack up there as well. Deft actually, I think, six to 800 gold behind in his bottom side, so I guess thankfully for him, he seems to be going for the cheaper uh, blue, but although it could go into Trinity Force as well. Another second dragon going to get picked up here by King. Yeah, it actually looks like he is going into that Trinity Force because he's picked up the longsword there, so that will probably the, be the makings of the fate. Second dragon going over to King, but they've continued their tactic have EDG not going away from it whatsoever, continuing to bully the Rumble. You see Clear Love really have made that top side of the jungle his own, but MLXG in a good position for a gank here has been spotted out by a ward. Yeah, gives it up there. Maker will spot them. Spear again going just wide there for MLXG. Deft going to farm up the Gromp with the wave, pushing back towards him. Mako going to get speared there. MLXG might try and chase him. Can't quite find over the wall. Actually, Mako attempted a monsoon, uh, predicting it, but it didn't go through. The shield comes in. Now Assassin's Ult is going to move. A good flash air is going to keep him out. The last bolt lands. And good dancing shoes there by Mako. And Koro in the top lane. Another kill on Tarot. Rumble. Yeah, and that'll be a tier two turret. They're just sticking to their plan of continuing to push on that lane. 
Pawn going to be able to push out mid lane as well at this point. So they'll grab two turrets for one, and they're the team that picks up the kill. Yeah, I mean, Maker with no health there after getting spear, but Pawn gets a turret, another one there. And actually, EDG is still pushing, so a tier two coming through, but that's not quite enough here for King. Yeah, and now they have to make the hard decision. Do they respond to the top lane push or the mid lane? Because Pawn's pressuring a tier two as well at this point. And all across the map, EDG forcing King to make poor decisions. Yeah, a quick pause here, but you're right. EDG are just constantly throwing hard choices here at King. And we've talked about King as a team that execute best when they're ahead and really on the front foot with their game plan. This is a very good way to disrupt a team that plays best when they're playing like that. Yeah, it certainly is. And they're another team that plays through their top laner. So picking on Sky is definitely a worthwhile tactic. They targeted his Aurelia and... Now they've just continued to take members into his lane. Zero four. He's got four of the five deaths of his team. And remember, that first kill came through before minions had even walked out. So very impressive play out of the EDG lineup to execute to their game plan. Yeah, and you can see a very cute scores here for Coral and Cliff. 2 0 2 so far, sharing that score. And that's no surprise. All of those are onto Sky's Rumble. Yeah, it certainly is. They've been together the whole way through and even bought in Pawn every now and again when they feel like they need a little bit more support. Of course, taking friends with you places is always fun. Well, Pluto loves to take his buddies around the map with him. And uh, Pawn doing well, like you mentioned as well. Need to see Lad Rod done there as well. So probably a Zonia's for a bit of that engage that you talked about in the draft. Yeah, it certainly looks to be that way. As we see a little bit of action in the bottom lane. Yeah, Clearly going to run down here looking for the bottom lane. Finally, Lamb going to move in Mako here as well. But the teleports have come through. Cole actually on top of a tunnel and he might go for the tower. Dive death going to move in. They want Wush and so bad, but a beautiful solar flare going to lock them up. A Kalista going to try and hop out. Cora ults himself. Twisted Fate going to come through. Assassin though picks up Deft and Works is still moving through. Koro does get the next kill. Sorry, on to Rumble. And they're still chasing this Kalista who's got so many ransacks, but a stun finally comes through for uh, TF, and that's two for one EDG. Doesn't look like they're finished. They want to try and get some form of a flank through here with MLXG, although he's been stunned up as well. Yeah, has to be careful, Liam. The does land the Zenith Blade Mako. Gonna get stopped there, but Koro just blows up the Nidalee. Liam goes down to Rek'Sai, an assassin. Forced to flash a slow, just missing there, but the Prey Seeker does hit Pawn. No mobility left. They're gonna throw out some wild cards, but they're not quite there. The tower's still there. Clear the flash on Boris and gets the last kill. And what a fight out of EDG. That was a turret dive where they got Held there for such a long time, able to juggle in pawn with the flash onto the Callista, completely shut down any form of a counter aggressive out of Wushin. Terrific play. They only lost one member and aced the lineup. They did, and you know, Deft actually died quite early in the team fight. Hasn't had the best start to his game, actually falling still behind in CS now. His build still going through. He's about 550 mana through his transform for the mana immune, and not even up to his fade yet for his Trinity Force. But the rest of his team putting Deft on his back, on their back this time. Yeah, certainly are. That Zonya's Hourglass has been finished in the mid lane, so that's pawn exactly where he wants to be, able to engage on this Callista all of a sudden. Wuxian doesn't have the same freedom he thought he would be afforded in this game. And Zonya's Hourglass now finished up on Coral as well. They're at the exact point in the game where they want to be. Yes, yeah, so we talk about double AP. The Sandra Twist of Fate, haven't seen it in a while, but uh, a very potent comp, especially at this point in the game with those two item spikes coming in. There's the Seraph Stone, though, for MLXG. So things are stacking up, and it's funny. We look at Death's tier, he's been stacking it all game. But uh, Nidalee is just that much faster at stacking it. Yeah, it certainly is. Has the advantage of being able to use non-mana intensive moves and that pounce to use it for mobility to just stack it so hard. And Yeah, it definitely is going to get to a bit of a later point for Death. He's got his Phage now as well as those Lucidity Boots. Still hasn't been able to finish off that Trinity Force. So he is a little bit further behind than where he would have liked, but has the luxury of... I guess being able to take it slow this game doesn't really need to do much heavy lifting. No, I mean, there's just so much mid-game power here for EDG, and probably the best news for them is that that translates into this dragon that's going to be back in about a minute 20 here. EDG are going to find a very straightforward fight, you have to think, for the third dragon here. They do want to deny up from King, and they'd love to get that objective rolling for themselves. Yeah, they certainly would like to be able to pick up their first one with all of the raw stats that are coming out of this Lissandra and Twisted Fate especially, and... The movement speed's all, all, only going to help Wuxian's Callista try and survive these fights. So, a lot of pressure there. Wuxian's picked up his second item as well, and Deathcap's been finished off for Zerus. So, they, they have good poke potential, but it looks like this dragon will be firmly in control of EDG. Yeah, I mean, we always look at Nidalee and talk about poke. I feel like she's very powerful, but maybe a little bit linear as Pawn. Hoping uh, we should walk by, but it did not happen. Instead, we'll clear the wave out. But when you have all that poke, it doesn't really beat all this hard engage. Oh, and 
There's some continual poke coming out of here, so it, we'll see whether they can go head-to-head -head with it. I, I, I definitely agree there is a lot of hard engage now that the fact that Twisted Fate has been brought in. One of the best hard engage mid-gamers, uh, mid-laners, so they, they definitely made a good adaptation, but they're just trying to chunk Koro out here before the dragon fight even begins. Yeah, good movement there by Koro, but the death cap doing work there, so King getting the poke in early. Now Fate Scores win his Pawn could be in trouble. Lane going to try and find the ulti, but Pawn dodges it. There's a skill shot as well. We talked about the movement. Ghost getting popped, and Pawn again just dancing around in style. And look how quick he is with that Ghost from the distortion. That's two ultimates used to try and catch him off guard. Will mean that they can probably pick up the dragon here, but rest of EDG closing in very quickly. Yeah, actually, Pawn is going to ult in now if he wants as well. And King immediately pull off the dragon. They're too afraid of the Twisted Fate coming in. It's actually just down the bottom lane. Now he's going to move back in, actually trying to get a flank here, but can't quite find anyone, but does get them off the dragon. In fact, the first one does go to EDG. Yeah, so EDG able to pick up their first dragon, two, of course, on the side of King. And that minion wave in the top lane, as it's just been pointed out, getting bigger and bigger, starting to crash in. King need to get control of their side wave, start pushing them back in their favor. EDG have already rotated to the top side of the map as well. They have a great option select here, continuing to push or maybe even just getting vision or onto the Baron. Pawn doesn't have his ulti, but he is going to back here. And EDG just so good at moving around the map, especially with these two globals. Yeah, will nearly be able to pick up a Void Star for himself as well. Actually goes for another needlessly large rod. So looking for that death cap, looking to be more of a carry twist of fate this game. And yeah, we keep going back to it. Death, sure, he's fallen pretty far behind, 50 CS, but across the board, Pawn absolutely smashing his way through this map. Koro is an absolute monster at this point. He's, he's going to go for the Abyssal Scepter, and I don't know if there's a way a double AP, triple AP really with this Nidalee comp can deal with the, how beefy this uh, Lissandra is going to be against magic damage. Yeah, and I, I like that you bring up Death to me. He has certainly fallen a bit behind, but... I feel like he just understands his role this game as Janitor because he actually has cooldown boots on his s <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. He's just trying to skirt the fight, get as much poke down as he possibly can, and then allow Koro and Pawn to take care of the dangerous members. As long as he's able to avoid all of the poke damage coming out, hence the Lucidity boots, he's going to be completely fine. Yeah, we normally see that with the blue build, but just going to be fine here with the Trinity Force boot, which is almost complete if not have enough gold for it now. So again, a little late here, but the Man Immune is in. Still not transformed, by the way, but Deft finally going to hit his two item power spike. Yeah, so so Death's got his spike. He's about one ability away from getting that transform through. So that will be a big point for Deft. He all of a sudden is relevant, although still a little bit behind Wuxian. But the advantage of your team being ahead, Deft can continue to go aggressive. Wuxian's been forced into a third item defensive item. Just not confident he can survive all the CC that's coming out. Yeah, I mean, Lissandra all just so strong that even the Twisted Fate Sun, likely a QSS coming through there for Wush, which will be a great pickup here as well. Moon has been transformed now as well for Def, so like you said, he's relevant. And even the Mikhail here for Maker are going to make sure they can keep any of these carries alive. Yeah, certainly. I think that's for the fact that they want to make sure that Koro can hit Stasis. So probably more of a Mikhail's for Koro not getting locked up, as we see. Three-man gank brush being set up in this bottom lane. I mean, Koro snuck in here. Actually just throws the cube a little short there. Could have maybe just waited there and probably altered that Callisto. would have died instantly, but there is a QSS. Maybe she would have been okay. And Deft actually poking his head around. Does get poked off a little bit. We'll back off towards the Baron area. Yeah, but did a lot of damage with that Q with the full mana coming through. And we see a little bit of a version of a 1-1-3, one, one, kind of, trying to put as much pressure on Wuxian as possible. But he's completely fine. Firing up a storm in this bottom lane. And a lot of pressure now on the AD carry from King to see whether he can... I guess, recover this game. I mean, I like that you try and identify the push structure here. One through one's probably the best way to describe it, but Monte Cristo would love this game. There are so many rotations going on by EDG. They are constantly moving around the map together. Yeah, they certainly are, and they're using their uh, superior control of vision very well to duck into dark areas and make King chase them. Now even starting up the Baron with three members, and... TF Ultimate coming through, he's going to be able to join them as well. Yeah, I mean, again, maybe even force them back. Assassin actually does know they're there now, so EDG have to pull off the Baron. A good attempt there by EDG to sneak it away, but King are definitely on top of that objective. Yeah, just with no uh, lifesteal coming through from Death, taking a lot of incidental damage, so not able to pick it up at this point, but the idea is there. Now it's in King's mind. If they disappear into Fog of War, are they doing that Baron? What is going on? So... 
Definitely the mind game starting for EDG. And the response from King, it's a good one. They've cleared out all of the wards in that Baron area. Yeah, and I love their defensive vision here as well. Pretty much all across the map for them. Because EDG, again, they've pushed down some turrets. They do want to get aggressive here. Let's look at the gold. EDG actually crept up pretty nicely to about 6,500 gold ahead. And that's reflected a lot in the mid and top lanes especially. But King still has some room here. And, you know, we talked about them playing from behind. They're playing actually very safe right now. Yeah, they're playing very controlled. I like it just because of how big Callista will get as this game goes on. If able to shrug off a little of the damage, will be relatively safe. I think that the next major item that needs to come through from Lamb is that Mikhail's just needs to be able to keep Wuxian alive. And if Wuxian can clean up these fights after a great Sky Ultimate, there definitely is still signs of life. But with how well, especially the top and mid laner have been playing for EDG, you just feel that they're in the driver's seat and they're the ones that are dictating the pace of the game at the least. Yeah, and the pace right now, dragging up in a minute five. So EDG can look to equalize the objective and make it two for two if they can pick up the next one. So of course, it'll be King's third which we always talk about as being very important here in these matches, especially with, I mean, with any champion, really, but especially with the likes of something like, I don't know, Callista or even someone like Xerath that's a bit immobile. Yeah, and yeah, that, I think it's more important with their team comp that you're speaking about because they want to kite backwards so much. They want to be able to wear the first layer of CC, kite back and continue the fight, and then I guess they chase terrifically as well. So I definitely think the movement speed is a big thing that will come out for this team. Um, just not sure if they can control that area of the map because of how much poke will come out of form, and uh, I guess the ability of Koro to start a fight from absolutely nowhere. Yeah, Going to check in with the rest of King as well. We actually have two items done for Rumble, Sork Shoes, uh, Haunting Guys, plus the Zonya's done. Magus and Chan and almost a Void stuff done for MLXG, so Nidalee getting up there as well. Assassin also three items. We've talked about Callista already with two and a half plus a QSS, so things looking good now. EDG still ahead in items, but King have certainly played a very safe 10 minutes of farming. Yeah, they certainly have, and they saw the uh, AD in the bottom lane, so they tried to start off the Baron, but that's not going to work. Just took too much damage. And now the fantastic rotation out of Pawn into the mid lane, picking up a free turret. Yeah, Death Div in there as well. Pawn so good at threatening with his ultimate. Hasn't actually used it that many times to, you know, for a Ganko to really pressure someone when he's activated it, but always uses it for vision, which is a sign of a very good twist of Fate player. Yeah, and now they send two members into the bottom lane to complete their rotation, pick up another outer, and the response can't even be barren because if it is, they'll just take the base. Yeah, and EDG just playing, again, so well together as a team. So much fluid movement here all across the map. It's quite hard to keep track of it. EDG are making it work with the Rek'Sai side twist of Fate Core. And even Jana especially uh, moving in so speedily around that. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Captain and Chen coming through. Yeah, certainly wouldn't. And we see Dragon. That's a third unanswered objective just from these two guys running around the map. Depth and Pawn. Just putting out so much pressure. Deft even throws the ultimate across a minion wave just to ensure it keeps pushing. They're not done yet. Probably looking towards Baron next. Yeah, nice little play there from Deft. Going to keep it pushing through. Shades of Wage out from Wadley. They used to always snipe the cast of creeps for the slow pushes. Yeah, of course. Being able to influence a creep wave to continue pushing with Ezreal probably is one of the better uses of the ultimate, of course. Does a lot of upfront damage if you don't have to throw it through a uh, minion wave in a team fight. And you can never underestimate the ability of it to stack up your passive extremely quickly, but if you're not going to fight for the next 30 seconds, why not just chuck it out there? Yeah, we've had EDG go back and spend some gold now as well. Koro is unbelievably ahead right now. He's got his Zonya's Amarillo and Nomicon he's had for a while, but he's actually got both the Negatron Cloak and the Need to See Loud Rod just for some flat stats. Lockets on there for Clear Love. Uh, Sheen now up for Pawn, working on a Lich Bane as his fourth, and Deft is almost done with his Bloodthirster. Yeah, so I guess the only thing that you can really say here is the fact that maybe no Void Staff or... Uh, Abyssal coming out makes uh, Wuxian uh, MR a very valuable pickup in this game, but that's grasping at straws. Otherwise, they have an absolute smorgasbord of items at their disposal and in a very good position. Even Deft has got himself to a position where he's comparable in gold, only 300 behind now, and really will start doing his job as that AD carry much more effectively. Yeah, down the bottom. Pawn has actually snuck his way into the bottom very sneakily here. Koro was almost babysitting the wave for a shot. Well, now Pawn's going to move in and just destroy it. Yeah, so he's able to push that one. He's using, looking to use his ultimate as that split pusher. Get Koro into the top lane and then keep three people grouped up. Jana, we speak about being the best probably 1-3-1 one, one support because it's so hard to engage on her, particularly without a Morgana in the game to mitigate that monsoon coming through. And they're looking to clear out wards once again, as we see. Pawn 
hiding in some vision, trying to get as much farm as possible. And it, it's funny to me, we normally see this sort of pushing when, you know, against a big AoE team fight come to break up all of the Wombo. You know, you separate some of the ultimates and break up the enemy, and they just can't realistically fight you if you don't give them a 5v5, but that is almost the same of Poke as well. Yeah, it certainly is, and I guess not committing to playing King's game plan, and Pawn actually gets a lot of poke damage down onto Sky there as well. He is just so far ahead, even in terms of levels. Clearlove going to pop over there. Now the ult going to get popped by Pawn as well. Lamb could be in trouble. Emelec G though, he's going to get locked up with a Frozen Tomb. Good shields coming in and Koro supports the bottom zone, but Assassin gets destroyed there by Pawn and Death. Now Koro is still kiting Sky. Going to go down. There's the double for Ezreal. 3 0 right now. Wush in trouble. They're going to have to get away. Lamb almost dead there as well. There's four kills for one. Death gets the triple to finish out the fight, and an ace comes through for EDG. Yeah, clean ace. They're going to be able to pick up a Baron. Koro goes bottom lane to try and even pick up a turret. Complete control over the whole map, and Pawn just does ridiculous damage at this point in the game. Got onto the back line and completely tore them apart. What a game out of EDG. You can tell why they're the top of the table, just so controlled. Yeah, I mean, they can play so many different styles, and they play them all very well as a team. Koro is going to get that in hip turret there with the Baron buff helping him out. So, very strong rotation once again by EDG. It's been a while since we've seen a twist of fate from Pawn, but he is performing today. Yeah, he certainly is putting on a clink. 350 CS, above that 10 CS a minute mark at 33 minutes. Top gold in the game by about 3,000. Just having his way with everything. Now finished up that Lich Bane as we actually see the ultimate coming out of Assassin. Not really achieving all of that much. Yeah, unfortunately only got poked there onto Clearlove who's very tanky on the Rek'Sai right now. Got a Banshee's Veil, a Giant Spot and the Locker plus Merc Treads done on top of his Chilling Smite with the Warrior. So Rek'Sai at 5 0 and 8. Actually the Randy one's done now for Clearlove. So a good purchase there. Going to ulti back now and maybe look for the next objective. No Dragon or Baron available right now, but plenty of lanes for EDG to push in. Yeah, and to just give some uh, the viewers a comparison, ooh, as Death actually going aggressive. MLXG is in a lot of trouble here. Pawn's going to move in. MLXG gets destroyed there. Death goes in and just kind of solos that Callista as well. And EDG, two quick kills. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Death is looking like an absolute monster on Ezreal as well. Just so much upfront burst damage coming through from those Muramana procs. They'll be able to grab the first inhibitor of the game. Wouldn't be surprised if they rotate into the top lane, try and grab the second one. Very controlled fashion of play coming out of this EDG lineup. And look at how much work Deft is getting done. Yeah, Deft is going in. We know him mostly for his corky, but eking out every single point of damage with the Ezreal as well. And we thought about it, it looked like sort of a weird lane matchup. Callista you know, strong both in fights and in lands here, but EDG just skirmishing all the time and never giving King a 5v5. Yeah, exactly right. And trusting on, I guess, not Def to win the team fight against the Callista, but the uh, Pawn's Twisted Fate as well as Koro's Lissandra. And that was an aggressive pickup by Wushin to take a, a very big hyper carry as Liam looks for an engage into a, uh, the hard counter of the Lissandra. Yeah, and that's what I love about the pick here as Ezreal for EDG is that they just force constant skirmishes, and sure, Callista in a big 5v5 with a frontline there, or you get poked out and you get snowball, and you're going to lose that fight to Rand, but if you're constantly skirmishing back and forth using Ezreal's mobility, Ezreal is the king of skirmishes. Yeah, it certainly is, and he's just able to get in and out of the fight at will, and just dictate, I guess, exactly how it's playing. Just looking over some of the builds here as well, as we do move through some of uh, the other purchases. Assassin actually has a Hextech Revolver. Yeah, which is really confusing because all of his spells are AoE. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but he, that's what he has in his inventory. Um, maybe he needs a little bit of extra sustain for EDG. They don't need much more to win this game. They've got Baron up, I mean, he's pushing in. Wush in trouble down the bottom. Pong and I'm maybe going on once again. Clear is very tanky. Lamb going to get blown up here. MLXG going to get killed off by Def Wush now in trouble. The Fade Skull does come down, but the exhaust is on. Pawn just destroys Kalista's health bar. Sky gets locked up by the Frozen Tomb. Pawn still wants a few more kills. Going to chase a fourth there for EDG. And game over. Edward Gaming still on top. Yeah, Gora actually dives the fountain trying to pick that one up. Def gets it. Two members go down, but it doesn't really matter. EDG able to take the game. Yeah, Def padding his score in there. 7 3 7 he ended on after diving head first into the fountain. A little bit of swag there at the end from Edward Gaming, but again, another strong game. Yeah, and I'm actually really mad at Koro right there because it was nearly a flawless performance by the top half of the map until Koro dove the fountain. Clear Love, Pawn, and Koro were all 
without deaths in that game, and it just shows how much control they had over the top side of the map. Yeah, and even for the bottom scores there as well. So we talk about Death 737, 727 before diving into the fountain for his last score. So we get 627 maybe as the real score. 1, 2, and, th uh, one, two and 13, sorry, there for Mako's Jonas. So again, not a big performance in the bottom lane, but a very consistent one. Yeah, exactly right. And just understanding the fact that they didn't need to carry, they just needed to scale up, be able to contribute to these team fights. That's exactly what they did. And Overall, the aggression that was coming out of Wuxian was just answered by complete decimation of the top lane. And for me, the big question now moving forward for Edward Gaming is, first of all, they haven't picked up a 0-2 series loss in a long time. That's not going to change today. They lost a Snake, I think, in week three. That was the last time they lost 2-0, and their last split was OMG last weekend here as well. So, oh, sorry, t this weekend, actually. Uh, yes on day one so a lot going on there but EDG they can almost play everything it seems like yeah exactly right they don't have to limit themselves to a particular play style and they played very controlled that time around and I like the Twisted Fate. The hard engage that it provided was very surprising. I think that took the King lineup by surprise. But hey, King this weekend also have shown that they can bounce back. Once again, they lost that game by about 20,000 gold, which is a massive margin. But if any team can really swing this one around, have a couple of pocket picks to bring out, it might just be the King lineup. Yeah, we do have a replay from that game as well. So let's dive back in and see just what EDG did this game. Yeah, so this is when they're still very far ahead. About 8,000 gold and Clear Love is looking for an engage. The important thing is to note where Pawn is on the map and he starts running as soon as his team wants to get in there and the engage comes through very well executed but Assassin who thinks he has a great position just gets collapsed on by Pawn so quickly and Pawn just takes over the whole fight. Death and Pawn on the back line all of the consistent damage you would like and go absolutely crazy in that. That's the fight that pulls Death really back into the game. Quasi there was such a very good performance out of the whole of the EDG but Pawn really just understands exactly where he needs to be and how to position in these fights. They really do an EDG, another strong game, but they've got one more to play here up against King. Can they keep the winning streak back alive? We'll find out after this quick break.